Carl. Stanley, what's up, man? What's going on, man? Thanks for joining us. You're joined by uh, Dennis Bermudez. He's a UFC featherweight. Thank you for joining us again. Hi, Carl. What's up, Dennis? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. Uh, Rick hooked us up. I really wanted to get you on. I've been following you for a while. What's going on with you? You have a fight booked right now? Yeah, I'm fighting this dude, uh, Adrian Miles, November 10th, down here. Where's down here? Where are you training at now? I know um, you're originally from Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm originally a Jersey kid, man. Um, grew up in South Jersey. Um, went to college at Newberry College in South Carolina. That's how I ended up down here, man. Um, we re I wrestled Division Two here. Um, back then, that's when we were pretty good. We were always ranked um, like number one or uh, top five in the country year in and year out. Um, Corey Anderson uh, was down there. My buddy BJ Young was down there. Um, yeah, a couple other guys that's fighting now that, that went there. Um, oh, but so I end up meet. So you have a wrestling background to go along with your um, your training with Wonder Boy. So you have, I'm assuming you have a karate background or a kickboxing background training down there. Not well. I mean, I do now, but I didn't beforehand. Um, honestly, when I first started fighting, when I decided to fight. I just knew I wanted to fight different, man. I wanted, I like watching the little guys fight. So I'm coaching wrestling now down here in uh, Gaffney, South Carolina, uh, a Division II school called Limestone College. Um, and I actually had a kid on my team that trained with uh, Wonder Boy. Um, and I think at the time I just had only had like one amateur fight. Um, and I wasn't really sure if I still wanted to do it because I just, every gym I walked into was either Muay Thai or like, you know, everyone tried to like shut me down and, you know, kill my athleticism so oh, I, uh, they didn't want wrestlers coming in and beating up their students yeah pretty much and they didn't want me moving around a lot yeah you know they they wanted me to walk you know walk a guy down stand and bang and all this other stuff and just originally i just was like man i'm not with that dude i'm like i'm trying to be you know eclectic you know what i'm saying about my style so how old were you when you first started fighting man i, I started late i've only been doing this been doing this for a couple of years so i started at 26 oh yeah that is late man but how long you've been wrestling for you wrestled for how long uh since i was a uh, high school freshman in high school so i've been wrestling for about 15 years now out of new jersey yeah yeah new jersey's got some tough wrestlers yeah this whole yeah this I whole was, northeast yeah. is killer with wrestling yeah dude that's the only place i recruit from man um but I got thrown right to the fire when I started wrestling, man. I had, um, like, Doug Umbahauer. He was an All-American for Ryder um, a few years back. Um, but, you know, he was he was the big guy in my wrestling room in high school, you know, when I first started. That's what's up. So what do you do now? You're more of a striker? Or you come into the fights looking to wrestle? It seems like uh, the last fight I saw that I watched, you seemed like you were looking to strike a little bit. Um, honestly, man, it all depends on who I'm fighting. You know, I think one thing, uh, one thing my grappling coach um, talks to me about um, is that, you know, I got the blessing to be able to switch the game plan up. You know, so when I was working my striking, you know, I, I would really, you know, going through the Amis and everything, I would strike a lot more than I would grapple. I was trying to hold myself back from grappling just to work on the striking as I was at Ami. Um, But now I just put it together. So it's whatever the, the game plan calls for. You know, if it calls for, for me to uh, set my strikes up to wrestling, I'll do it. Um, if it calls for me to stand and strike, I can stand and strike and keep my distance. Um, so I know I'm like, I was like the only one to ever start coming into this game. to be like, I'm going to mix karate with wrestling and no one else was doing it. And then when I saw Henry Cejudo pick that shit up like two, two or three fights ago and switched it up. And I see somebody on that high level, you know, doing it and getting it done, getting the job done and just be DJ. You know, I think I'm on the right track. Yeah, you're talking about like uh, not having such a square stance, creating more of an angle, right? So, Carl, how many yeah. how many how many knockouts do you have? Um, I think like three or four. Yeah, because here's the thing: as a wrestler myself, I mean, now I've never. I mean, my my very first amateur fight, I knocked a guy out, but I was like, uh, that guy just sucked. Like he didn't know what he was doing, you know. But I mean, yeah. once you get to the higher levels, man, you see, you know, great wrestlers knock a few guys out, and, and if you ask me, hey, Dennis, do you want to wrestle with this guy and continually take him down for 15 minutes, or do you want to box with him for 15 minutes, which one takes less effort? For me, for a wrestler, if I can take a guy down and keep taking I understand guy down. that, but let's say you're going against another good wrestler, like, I would rather, like, stand there and box yeah, with It's knocking, easier. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? I'm so when, when you get in these <laughs> fights, you know, and it's like, man, do I sit here and bang with this guy? Do I try to take him down? It's way more energy efficient 
to sit there and bang than it is to to, to attempt to take down. Because I get that all the time. Why didn't you just take him down? I'm like, yeah, well, there's gas in the tank, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to make yeah, that yeah. gas it's, last. It's <laughs> so to the, be honest, that's, that's what I realized when I first started training with Wonderboy, man. It was like, you know, when I first went in, my you know my thought was like, oh, he's a good striker. Oh, I'll take him down. Right. And that motherfucker started moving around the cage. I was like, God damn, I can't get to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, my my striking wasn't good enough to set up my wrestling. And then once I got to him, you know, I found out he was even tougher to take down than what I thought. So I was like, man, this is tiring as hell. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you can't take him down or hold him down. Mm-hmm. You know, then it's a different, whole different story. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at your... um. Your listings here with your height and your weight and whatnot. You, it says you're six three. You're a tall. Uh, you're a tall light heavyweight. You're a tall fighter if you're six three, right? Yeah. All right. So you're, you're like a rangy guy. Do you try to emulate Wonder Boy style a little bit? Are you throwing kicks or is it a lot of hands into uh, takedowns? Uh, I throw a lot of kicks. Yeah, a he just said kicks. he was uh, trying to be the karate. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's trying guy. to do it. Is that what he's doing in his fights? That's what he wants yeah, to do. Yeah, dude. Hang on. I hear. I hear the man. He's gonna do it. Have you landed anything big yet in your fights? Any big kicks that are like have caught highlight reels or anything? Oh yeah, yeah. If you check out my IG, go to no words underscore read. I got a highlights on there, dude. I kicked a couple kid dudes' heads clean off. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to see. That's what fans like to see. I'm sure. So you're definitely on the UFC's radar, especially having been on the Contender Series. What'd they say to you after that fight? Um, so I took the Contender Series fight. I only had two pro fights. Um, took the fight. I took the fight um, for the guy that had a little more experience than me, but, you know, I couldn't pay for that type of exposure, so I took it. I had a bad weight cut, man. Um, my legs kind of died out, so I made it. I was making it look easy in the first. Then the dude had, like, over 10 fights or so, and I was beating up on him, and I just died out. I think I would have lasted, like, another minute or so in the second round. I probably would have eked out a split decision. Um, but Mick called me afterwards. He called me my manager afterwards and just asked us what happened, you know, because I was looking so good in the first round. You know, we just told me, you know, we had a bad weight cut. Um, you know, thanks for the opportunity to be back. So, um, and then I saw Mick again because I went up to, uh, I went to New York to corner Steven when he fought uh, Mazadal. I went up there to corner Steven and uh, I saw Mick again, you know, so I talked to him again and I just told him, I was like, you know, you know, I'll be back. You know, don't don't count me out, man. You know, I had a bad weight cut, but I'll be back. He was like, yeah, I know, just get your fights. So my manager came back and asked him to be on the, the second season this summer, and I turned it down. I told him, don't worry about it. You know, let me go back. Let me get some more fights. Um, so when I come back, I know I'm one of the best light heavyweight prospects in the country. Oh, um, And I know I'm going to get a contract when I go back. So they asked you back you for the this past season of the Contender Series? Yeah, they wanted me to come back. There was other guys that lost and went back. Um, like the Ryan Span, I think he got knocked out in like 15 seconds the first season, came back this season, won, and they signed him. You know, so light heavyweights, the weight class, they're, you know, they're looking for guys. Yeah. I feel like definitely because a lot of the other guys that have been there and been prevalent, the Glover Tech Shares, the DCs, John Jones, all those other guys, though, they're getting old. So they need that younger crop to come in, the Corey Andersons, the Carl Reeds, the guys like that. Yeah, they're getting older, and then, in my opinion, I feel like it's like DC, John, John Jones, and his, his Gus is in, and it's kind of like everyone else is like kind of falling into place right now. Mm. Um, it's kind of like everyone just beating everybody, and not too many people are starting to stand out and kind of make that run. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, light heavyweight, light heavyweight division. You know, from just studying the game, was always the most popular division in the game, um, just because they're you know they're bigger athletic heavyweights. You know, they're athletic enough to move like little guys a little bit, and they got enough power to knock you out like a heavyweight. So it was interesting to see, and you're just not seeing it right now, especially with John Jones on the shelf. You got DC going at the heavyweight. So who who's really there? Oh yeah, and I think especially we'll see it as the money starts coming into the sport, and we see the football player, the guy, the kids grow up, and they pass up football, they pass up basketball, and they go into MMA, UFC combat sports yeah so what you just said right there is and i I mean with all the money in in football and basketball i really think some of the best heavyweights light heavyweights are in don't don't even know how to fight yeah they don't they they don't have the skills to fight but had they had some training they would be the best some of these guys i think yeah oh absolutely well i've heard john jones say that his big brother beats him up 
So his oldest brother will beat him up right. all the time. So, so like Brandon State. Schraub, yeah. for these other football players that were in the NFL and got cut, come over fighting, now they're these big stars. Imagine you took the guys that didn't get cut and yeah. brought them over to the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you look at a guy like Greg Hardy, man, that's just, I mean, he they're building him up through the contender series, and he's just knocking dudes dead. You know what I mean? You oh, get yeah. those freak athletes that's been through college and them D1 lifting programs where all they do is just feeding these dudes, um, you know, it's going to be some trouble, you know what I I'm saying, agree. if they start realizing that. And with the new ESPN deal um, that the UFC got going on, man, I can see it happening in the next decade or so. Oh, yeah, I see with the ESPN deal, that's what I see. I see the gap closing between the MMA and the other sports, especially with the talks of the possible trades and all this. I see all of this as just the sport growing. So more coverage, more, you know, more fights, bigger fights, all that. I think Conor McGregor even losing to Khabib was a little bit of the passing of the torch. I think Khabib started with, like, 4 million followers when that fight happened. Now he's got, like, 15. Yeah, he's got a ton. Yeah, like, he blew up. No, I think he might... uh, might Yeah, he's got, like, 10 million followers now. Yeah, you get the rub. crazy. The men has got, like, 27,000. Blowing up, blowing (laughs) up. (laughs) Woo! All right, so we want to thank you for joining us, Carl. Who who are you fighting again? Let us know one more time. Um... Fighting Adrian Miles, I think he's out of Mississippi. I'm fighting him at A64, fighting championships here in South Carolina. And what do you think? You think this is the fight that gets you back to the UFC, or you think two or three more? Um, all depends on what we want to do uh, between me and Rick. Um, I honestly, I'm, I'm looking at the UFC, so I'm thinking uh, this fight. I'm, you know, it's time to go see the gatekeeper. You know, this dude's like 16 yep. and 11. I was, I was just going to say, looking at him, he's definitely solid. He's got a lot of fights, so he's definitely a gatekeeper type of guy. Yeah, you know, it's time to go see the gatekeeper. It's time to go do my thing, you know, and then I'll probably look for I'll probably look for another gatekeeper type guy, you know, before uh, I hit back on and try to get back on a contender series next summer. And what do you think, keeping uh, keeping it with age 64 championship down there in Virginia? Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, I, I'm all about opportunity. Something pops up big, like a CES or LFA pops up for me to come fight for a title. I'll do that and drop up a hat. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, A64 is flying guys in for me um, to come take these ass whoopings. So, you know, I'm happy to fight my own backyard until I got to start traveling again. Yeah, but, uh, Carl, like one, um, you know, I hear you saying, and it makes sense, you know, but, I mean, the, the, the body... Cause I've been through it, man. I've been, I'm still doing it. You know, the body takes a beating after a while. For, for like, if I could give you any advice, I would try to get into UFC as soon as possible and try and polish up. Cause, the, you know, you're taking damage and stuff like that while you're still taking on these guys for lesser money. Um, so, I mean, that's just my two cents. Yeah, I get what you mean, Dennis. Yeah. A fight's a fight, so I mean, every it's, it's fight not, takes yeah, something out yeah, of you. Your training camp is yeah. what really takes Cause, out of Because, like you said, you, it, you know, it's not like you're you're young. Would you, you're you 26, right? Or your first fight was at 26. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm turning 30 on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know. Prime of his life right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You're... He, he's one or two fights away from the UFC, so I'm sure once he gets there, he'll, yeah. be, he'll be on a quick rise, especially because he definitely has some notoriety from the Contender Series. Yeah. So that's so, my, yeah, that's my and one that's, tip. And I'm trying to get back as quick as possible. You know, I am definitely know, like, 20, even when I first started, 2019 was always a year. You know, but, of course, when I get a call from a contender series two fights in, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to speed that goal up big time. You what'd know, you, so. What would you do in the break between wrestling? Like, what would you do before you started fighting from, like, 20 to 26 or 22 to 26? To be honest, I did, man, I, I was just coaching. So I was always around combat sports. I was just coaching, man. And then, um, honestly, I had, my, I had my first coaching job. I was down in South Georgia at junior college. I was a head assistant there, and I had an athlete pass away from a heat stroke, dude. And it kind of really stressed me out. So I had to get away, and I, that's when I started training, mm-hmm. to get away from all the stress from that. So once I started doing it, you know, I, I kind of picked it up quick, and it was like, damn, I'm picking up this sport quicker than I picked up any other sport I ever did. You know, so I, I just kept rolling with it. And then, you know, six months later, I'm training with Steven Thompson, you know, arguably one of the best strikers in the world. Like, well, I got some grappling, you know, behind me now. Now I got, you know, I'm at a good place with a good coach that can teach me how to, you know, put my hands and feet together. And now training with Steven Wonderboy, looking at your size, I'm sure you've gotten some rounds in with Weidman as well, right? Yeah, I've gotten a few rounds in with Weidman. Uh, when I first started training, he was just here a few months ago. My last camp, he was here. I got some rounds in with him. 
how'd those go? Those were a good gauge for you to see kind of where you're at, I'm sure. Yeah, man, those are always, you know, going with guys like wide man, like I've trained with Rashad Evans. I've gone up to New York and went to Henzo's and, you know, trained with Corey, trained with uh, Belante and, and training with those guys, man, and, and seeing that I can hold my own and get the best of them sometimes, you know, it boosts my confidence, you know what I'm saying? So I know I can fight on a level, you know, if I'm just presented with the right opportunity at the right time. Oh, absolutely. That's what I always say to guys. Once you, you, you kind of got to take guys off the pedestal. Yeah, they're really good. They deserve the respect, but you got to realize you could be that good too. You just got to go for some moves and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, after my first, after my first uh, pro fight, I went up, that's when I went up to Henzo's. And actually, it was the first time I sparred with Corey. Um, and me and Corey were training partners in college um, for wrestling, but I never sparred with him, you know, because Corey had started fighting way before I did. Um, but the first time I, me and him ever sparred, you know, I told him, hey, man, I got different style, you know, blah, blah, you know, me and we were just talking trash back and forth like typical wrestlers, you know, and I pieced him up a little bit the first time we ever sparred, you know, and you got Mark Henry and Ricardo Almeida in there yelling at Corey, Corey, and telling him, hey, man, this is my boy, you know, he, he's pretty good. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I took some lickings from Corey, too, you know, a couple rounds later. But ever since then, you know, it's been a, that day kind of boosts my confidence, you know what I mean? And then I, you know, I turn around, I spar Volante, do well with him, you know, then I knew, I'm like, okay, I can, you know, that was my confidence really high. I was one fight in to my pro career. I was like, all right, I can do this. Oh, yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to go with some of the guys at that level, and then it just, just get a little, get one thing, land a jab or something, and it just gives you confidence to start working some more techniques, and then you believe that you can actually do it, and that's what you need in the gym. So uh, Yeah, 100%, 100%, man. I go up, I try to get the quarry at least, you know, once or twice a year, especially, like, once wrestling season's over for my guys. Oh, yeah, and those guys are killers over there. Dennis, any other advice you can offer someone like Carl as he's on the come up? I mean, he's got it all figured out. I think he's, he's trained with the right guys. He's, uh... I mean, I guess, hey, get after that way earlier, my dude, right? You said that screwed you up in the Contender Series. So, I mean, that's always one of my things, man. It's, it's not like, as soon as I get a fight, it's not like, oh, I got to throw, I got to fight this guy. It's like, oh, I got to lose. I got to cut that weight. I got to lose 25 <laughs> pounds, like, fuck, 30 pounds. Like, damn it, man. Oh, I'm yeah, not the trying. weight cut's like, never fun. That's, it's never the, like, oh, I'm fighting this guy. Like, oh, he's tough. It's always like, damn, I got to fight my damn self. Get this damn win yeah, off. So, <laughs> what do yeah, you honestly, after, after that, man, I, I switched it up, dude. I got a meal prep company to help me nice, out. And I got yeah, these guys nice. down here called the Fight Doctors um, that handles my weight cut now. You That's know, because after the contender series, the next fight, I had another bad weight cut. After that, I, I switched everything up. So my weight cuts are good now. What are you usually walking at? Um, Usually around like 235, 240. Oh, it's like the same as you, Stan. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm a lightweight. I'm just the overbloated lightweight. A, a, a little welterweight. <laughs> I'm sure this guy's tremendous compared to me. So, But thank you for joining us, Carl. Me and Dennis appreciate it. We'll get you back on after you beat this guy in November. And uh, anything you want to say right now, chat, get, let people know your Instagram, your social media, anybody you want to shout out, go ahead. The floor is yours. All right, man. I appreciate it, guys, man. Thanks for having me on. Just You guys can follow me at nowords underscore read um, on IG, man, and just uh, keep following, man. I'm coming up real quick. All right, thank you again for joining us, Carl. I appreciate it. All right, man, appreciate it. Woo! That was Carl Reed, ladies and gentlemen.